One of the core concepts of business is knowing your customer. This, of course, can mean many different things, including vertical markets, public, private, or government sectors, and even age, education level, and income level. Different types of businesses will have different needs. In fact, you may also need to analyze the demographics of your employees and staff, and not just your customers. If we have captured this data, we can use Excel pivot tables and manual grouping to turn what could be a lot of meaningless data into useful demographic information that can be used by sales and marketing, research and development, and even human resources. We currently have the Customer Demographics file open from the Chapter 2 Working Files folder. It has a sampling of customer data. It contains 50 records to be exact. One of the fields includes the customer name, or the participant's name, as well as their date of birth. You can see that the date of birth is the month, day, and year. And I've already inserted a column because we need to figure out their age. In addition, we know which application they took a class for and the actual date of that class. This data could be utilized in many different ways. We're interested in calculating how old the person was when they took the course, and then using that information, we're going to create a pivot table to tell us how many people of each age participated in our different classes. Since all we're worried about are whole years, not parts of years, we can identify the year only from their birth date and subtract the year only from the class date. Let's go ahead and give that a try. It really is simply a matter of subtracting two dates, but we're going to use the year function to pull just the year and not the month and day. Every calculation starts with the equal sign, and since we want to pull just the year, we will use the year function. The year function has only one argument, and that is the date. The first date, in this case, is cell E2. We close the parenthesis, type the minus sign, and what we're going to subtract from the value in E2 is the value in B2. Once again, though, we only want the year pulled from this date. When we press Enter, we can see that Betty Boop was 27 years old when she took an Excel 2013 class on January 8th of 2014. We also notice that because we had this data formatted as a table, we only have to enter one calculation. When we press Enter, it fills that calculation all the way down for the remaining 50 records. That'll save us a little bit of time and effort. We utilized the year function to pull that portion of a date field. There are a lot of date and time functions that can help in business, including some that will figure out not only how many days, but how many working days between two days. We can also work with things like a 360-day billing cycle. We utilize some of these other functions more heavily when we do things like accounting and billing, invoicing, and aging with Excel. For now, we have the numbers we need, so the next step is to create our pivot table. Creating the pivot table will take just a couple of clicks and then a couple of drags. Since our cursor is already in the data, we can move up to the Insert tab and choose the Pivot Table option from the left side of the ribbon. We can take all of the defaults because Excel correctly identifies our data range as the table that we had designated, and we also want to put it into a new worksheet, so all we need to do is click or tap OK. We're now presented with an empty Pivot Table range on our new worksheet and the Pivot Table Fields panel on the right-hand side of the screen. We know that we do not want to use the date of birth field, but instead the age field that we just created. So we'll go ahead and drag age from the top of the panel down to the row area. We also know that we want to see these broken down by application. So we'll drag application to the columns area. The calculation we want is simply going to count the number of records. So in some ways, it doesn't matter exactly which field we choose, as long as we make sure that every record has that information. We know that all of our records have a participant name, so let's drag that down to the values area. Because this is a text field, it automatically defaults to count of participants, and now we can start to see some useful information. For example, one 22-year-old took our Excel 2013 class, None took our Outlook, PowerPoint, Windows, or Word classes, so we have a grand total of only one 22-year-old that's taken a class. What we can quickly see is that this is far too detailed. Because it's basing the divisions in the row labels for every single individual age value, 22, 25, 27, 29, we have far too many records here to make it useful. 
In technical terms, we call this being too granular. We want to make it less granular or less detailed. What we really want is just groups of ages, not individual ages. When we're working with numeric data, this actually can be done very simply by simply right-clicking on the pivot table. Now, I purposefully right-clicked on one of our summary functions to show you that location does matter with pivot tables, and we have to right-click in the right place. If we instead right-click on one of our row labels, which in this case happens to be our ages, then we see an option to group. Any numeric field can be grouped easily, but let me show you the challenge with this. It lets you designate a start and an end, and then allows you to designate the range of the group. So if we started at 22 and said by 10, then it would put 22 to 32 in a group, 32 to 42, and so forth. That works very well for a lot of types of data, but it's not exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and click Cancel. We want to focus on four specific age groups. We've decided that we want to focus on those that are 25 and under, those that are 26 to 40, 41 to 60, and over 60. If you prefer more common terms, these groups might be referred to as roughly the millennials, the X-gens, the baby boomers, and the post-war generations. So the first thing that we should do if we need to manually group is make sure that the pivot table is sorted in the appropriate way. Ours is, our ages go from the lowest down to the highest. Now we select the values that we want in our first group. Remember, our designation was 25 and under, so that would just be our first two values. Once we have the values selected, it's simply a matter of a right click and choosing group. We can see that it creates a group called Group 1, and as we create groups, they can be expanded and collapsed. I think it simplifies things to collapse things down, so we'll go ahead and do that for our Group 1. Now we simply need to repeat the process for our remaining three groups. This would include 26 through 40 year olds. So we'll start with our lowest number and drag down through 40. Right click and group. And once again, we can collapse the group down. Our next group includes 41 to 60. And our last group is everybody else, and that would be 60 years and older. Other than getting a lot of experience with our right click, what exactly have we accomplished? Well, we can now very easily see that only a total of two people under 25 years of age have taken classes, and they both were Excel classes. We can see that our second and third groups are fairly well distributed. Not surprisingly, group four has fewer students overall than groups two or three, and it appears that they aren't very interested in Outlook. We don't know why, but the trends are more clear and meaningful now that we've grouped them. One more thing that's important to realize is that we can customize these labels. Group 1, 2, 3, and 4, it's too hard to remember exactly what those age groups were. By selecting these cells, we can simply type new names for the groups. We could do the age groups, or we could use the more common terms, like millennials and X-gens. Whichever kind of labeling makes it easier and is most appropriate for your use is just fine, but it certainly makes it easier to understand what the groupings mean over those generic labels. The other thing that can be very helpful, of course, is adding some formatting, because the alignment and the lack of shading here makes it very difficult to read. When we're working with pivot tables, we have a set of contextual tabs on the right side of the ribbon one for analyzing the pivot tables, and one for designing the pivot tables. And from the Design tab, we can choose any variety of pivot table styles, and with a single click, they can be applied. We can also apply a variety of formatting by simply selecting cells and applying things like formatting in the typical way. With just a quick glance, we can see that both our Excel and our Windows 8 classes are currently the most popular, with Outlook being a close second. If we look at the grand totals in the G column, we can see that by far a majority of our participants are in the X Gen and in the Baby Boomer age range. That nicely identifies both who is taking particular types of classes as well as who is not. Perhaps we need to market more to the latter group or identify why they aren't taking these classes. 
and tailor a new marketing campaign to them. A lot of variables may be involved, but this is the starting point for us to further identify trends and perhaps adjust our sales and marketing strategies to either target strong markets or bring in new ones. Don't forget, one of the other really nice features of pivot tables is that they can be refreshed to always show the latest demographic information. If our source data is a worksheet that's being updated regularly, for example, with people enrolling in classes, because our pivot table is based off of a table, as the data in the source table is added, removed, or edited, the pivot table will automatically include these data changes when it is refreshed. So at any time, someone can utilize this information without ever having to reconfigure the pivot table or touch the source data. That means one department, like sales or accounting, can be in charge of entering transactions, and a completely separate department, like marketing or human resources, can have access to the demographic information it needs. That can be a very powerful tool in any type of business when you need to know who your audience is.